Okay, so today we will follow the XML word, okay? Not the XML word, but the XML uh, concepts. So in the last two classes, we talked about XML, right? The foundations of XML and what we have around XML, right? Who can tell me? Uh, what is the two main issues that I talked about XML in the last class? Right. So, you want to talk, tell something? Yeah, this is another thing. So, so one thing I show it is first the two views of XML. Okay, in some play, in some, in, in one view, XML is something to produce uh, languages. So it's a meta language. Okay, so you have a lot of new languages based on XML. Okay, but also XML is something to metadata, to produce metadata. Okay. And a lot of standards around the world are based on XML. Okay? And then at the end of the class, I started to show what is the limits. Okay? And the limits, it, it appears in several ways. One way is uh, XML is, it has several ways to do the same thing in XML. And the second limit I show it is uh the how you express semantics in a uh, interoperable way so i show you do, for example sometimes you want to define types of things for example then you must have lists of options and 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 uh, it's hard to expand it's hard to mix and so on and so forth okay so today we will analyze uh xml in the point of view of a database, in the sense of, if you are thinking about a semantic web, okay, and if you are thinking that we have in the base XML, and machines will read that, okay, we can think that, okay, how these machines will ask, will request for information, okay, they want to something they need something okay so the machine will ask something but in the classic way you may imagine that it you ask an xml document like you ask a page right okay so i i go there and please give me the the document x okay so i read the document and i do something right but even us we don't read we we don't read all the documents all the time. What we do? We go on Google, for example, and we do some search and we ask for some information, some specific things. Okay? Or we enter in a system like Amazon and we put the name of the book and Amazon filter for us the things that's related of what we want. So we query a lot on the web. And you may imagine that machines will do the same. If I am a machine and I enter here, and you have billions of records in XML. I cannot go and grab each document and look to find what I want. So the basic idea is, can I sync the web as a database? So this is the start of the foundations of what people call about web of data. Okay? So... Is, is, is a bit different of the things we are using. Because now I want to query on the web. I want to have a machine that go there and ask something. Okay, so uh, I will jump here things that we already saw of XML and so on and so forth. We took a look, we look at on uh, XML schema, right? And today we will talk about XPath and XQuery, which is the two foundations to look for things in XML. Okay? So XPath, 
is something that expresses things in a way of a path. You write a path, and then it goes towards this path and find what you want, right? And X query is inspired in the idea of query. It's like SQL, SQL, okay? You do the query, and the system go there, look on the database, and gives you back some result, okay? So, to do that, we will use... Uh, uh, okay. So, uh, okay, here is uh, uh, some examples of uh, uh, a database book, Elmazri. Elmazri is a database book, has uh, uh, an interesting chapter about XML now. The, 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 the database literature is starting to look on, on XML, okay? And it, around the world, uh, several uh, database books, courses, are going towards XML, right? If you go to the course of database of Stanford, online course, um, uh, a big part of the course is on, data, on XML databases, okay? So this idea is you have paths, for example, a company and so on, and you define in the document the path you want. So let, to take a look on that, we um, we will analyze four basic elements of a path. Okay, first you that you have a slash. Okay, when you use a slash, if it's in the beginning of your sentence, so each X path sentence is just one line, always one line. Okay, one line, one sentence. It's a path. Okay. It's like the path of a directory in your hard drive, okay? Nobody uses... Uh, okay, if you are using Linux, it's much better, because Windows now, you just click and click, okay? But if you are using Linux, you have these slashes and things. This is a similar concept, okay? So if you start with a slash, it means that you start from the root of the document, okay? If uh, you put the slash in the middle, you are telling that you are going down in the hierarchy. If you put two slashes, you are going down in the hierarchy, but doesn't matter how many levels. It can be one, two, or ten. Doesn't matter. You just ten. It's down. But I don't know how many levels. Okay? Two slashes. If you use an uh, at symbol, okay? It means that you want an attribute. And if you use the, the asterisk, it means that you are considering any element. Let's start with some examples, okay? So, to, to, to use some examples, I like this online tool here. So, I will open it. This online tool, I will open it and we start to do something. Okay? So let me go there. Let me see if I put it, the link in the database course of the last semester because I think no, I didn't. Uh, okay, so I need, let me just close this guy, I need to copy and paste here, not, no, not copy and paste, but let me write here, so it's www online, okay, tools.com, tools, xpath editor. Okay, so I like this guy because you can you can put your XML in the right, left, okay? Put your XPath 
and it will give you the result. Okay? A lot of fun. So let's just zoom out here. Oh, I need some examples. I need to put my hard drive. It will be easier to put my hard drive because they are already prepared here. So, I have some XML files as examples. And now, I will start with one example and you help me telling about the others. Okay? So let's go. Let me open here this guy. It's more hmm. okay. Everybody wants to know my password, right? Okay. So now I will open here. A text file with some examples I read uh, prepared. No, it's not this one. What is my examples? I will do the following. It's easier. I don't know where I put the examples. I will do the following. I will open the slide. It's easier. I will open the slide and copy from the slide. It's easier. Because... Uh, Okay, so I will copy this guy here in the browser. Okay, good, very nice. Okay, and then let's try some uh, express sentences. Okay, so uh, you can take a look in the structure. Okay, so take a look on it. Here is better to see. No, it's better to see here, right? It's not so clear, but it's readable. It's readable. So I have an, uh, a root element. You may remember that any XML document je has just one root, which is fichario here. And inside the root, we have three elements individual which is individual okay and the name is an attribute okay and inside the individual we have the age and the gender okay this is our document okay so what do you think that will happen if I put slash fichario slash individual what do you think it will be the return of this XPath? 
Go ahead. You can answer in Portuguese, okay? If I put here slash fichário slash individual, what is the return of this express? Three? Three names? Is the three elements individual? You see, for the X path, the in, entire element is the return, okay? But you see that there are three guys that fit in this X path. So this is an important issue. It's not necessarily just one element that returns back. It can be several, okay? This is a, is a, a, a kind of query, okay? So you put there and return, the return is these three guys there, right? Okay? Okay, so let's go ahead. Ah. What's happening? Okay. Is this. And what do you think if I put this? Two slash and individual. Same thing? Same thing, because two slashes, if you remember, means something down in any level, right? In any level. So the result will be the same. Okay? The result will be the same. And what happens if I put this? So let's remember, what is the add symbol? means attribute, right? So what I, I want there? Three names, right? So I want... So I put that... Ah, sorry. It's not in English. Just the presentation is in English. It's a kind of... Okay, so it will present the three names. You see? Are you, are you following the idea? It's simple, right? It's simple. It's simple and powerful. Okay? And why we can do as a path? This is very important. This has a tight relation with the model. Why we can do that here and not in a relational model? Eu vou mostrar. O X query. With X query, yeah. So, why we use a path? Why this model supports a path? And we don't use this kind of concept in relational database. Can you tell me? Yes, exactly. It's a tree. Okay? If you have a tree, you can start from some place and go down through a path or through more than one path. Okay? But you can think in the idea of a path. You start some place and you go down. Okay? Okay. So I, tell, I told you several limitations of the hierarchy, but now I'm showing you some benefits of the hierarchy. Okay? Okay, uh, so uh, what in this case, what is the, the thing? It means what? It's easy, right? I mean, uh, you have individual in the middle, it's two dash, no, fichario, sorry, fichario, anything, any element in the middle, doesn't matter, right? And H. Okay. 
what is the difference of asterisk and two slashes? Right. Right. So with asterisk, I can tell is one element, one level, any element, but just one. Right? And when I use two slashes, is any, any number of levels below. Okay? I don't have control. Okay, now, for example, I, I, I want to uh, tell, okay, I, I want to refer the, if I have several possible elements coming back, okay? I want to refer if, if I want the, the, the element number one or two or three, so I can put the number of the element I want uh, in brackets, okay? I will show you examples. I can also ask, I want the last, for example, okay? I put last, I will get the last. Why I don't have a function for the first? Just for the last. This is to say, to see if you are paying attention. Why I don't have first, just last? Um. Right. Exactly. The first is one. <laughs> okay. But the last I don't know. Okay. Uh, and I can also filter an attribute. Okay. So I can put be, be inside the brackets some attributes, okay? And uh, I will filter elements with some specific attribute. And I can filter the elements with some value for some attribute, okay? So let's see by example, okay? What do you think this will give me? The entire second element, right? So, individual two. So, it will give me the entire King Casborba element, right? It's the second, okay. And this one. Same thing. Same thing. Okay. And this one. The age of King Casborba. Okay. And this guy. Just the number. Because you see here, it gives me back the element age and the number. But sometimes I want just the number. Okay, so I can put in this way, text. So it gives me the text inside the element. Okay, it gives me just the number 33. And, uh, and in this case, what do you think it, come, it gives me back? So I, uh, this one important thing is, I can use the filters in any level of the path. And for this reason, they have brackets. Okay, because... I can put in, in, in the middle. For example, uh, the age I want, what, what uh, this will return to me? The second and the third. Right. But just the name. The attribute name. Right? So, you may remember that when the attribute is inside the brackets, it's a filter. Okay? Or... An attribute or an element is inside the brackets, it's a filter. When it's outside the brackets, it's a path. Okay? It's a different. They are different. Okay? So here you see, the combination here means that. Okay? So the age more than 20, right? And I want just the name. Okay? So let's do an exercise now. Okay? 
everybody. Uh, I want, if you remember, I don't know if you remember rational data base. Which will be? Try to imagine. Try to imagine. Okay? That I have a, a table, right? Of uh, individuals with the schema. This is schema. Write three columns name, age, gender. And I want to produce a select. Um, I want to produce a select that gives me. The equiv equivalent of this X pass. What? How you write that? Yes, you can. This is the the topic of the last class. There is no there is no unique way to to do the an schema, right? There are some clues, there are some advice, okay? For example, some advice. If the thing you want to represent has more, can, can be more multiple occur occurrence, okay? You cannot use attributes because attribute has just one occurrence, okay? So, for example, name has just one occurrence, so it's okay to be an attribute. Age the same, gender the same, okay. But you, if you want to have some attribute to tell, for example, which titles the guy have, so title something, title something, you can have several titles. It cannot be an attribute because each attribute appears just one time in each element. So this is one rule, okay. So it's better to put them as elements, okay. The second rule is if something is complex in the sense has something inside, something size, it must be an element because an attribute cannot be complex. Okay? If something is a key, could be a key to reference, it better to be an attribute because it's, it's easier to do references to attributes. Okay? So this is a kind of basic key advice. But besides that, you can do in the way you want, and people do in different ways. Okay, do you remember something of? Uh, do you remember something of uh, SQL? Nobody. You are not in the mood. Everybody in the in the. So, if, oh God, okay, I, I will jump this exercise, because this exercise is for SQL, since we didn't see SQL, I will avoid this thing. So, let's, let's go to X query, which is the thing that, is the second thing, okay. So, the first is, um, uh, X path is, is more simple, okay, in the sense that you want just to define a path. The X query is designed to be a full query language, okay, it's designed to compete with SQL, for example, okay, so you can do complex queries on X query. But the thing is, X query and X path they talk, okay, you can use X path inside X query, okay? And there are some tasks that they overlap. There are things that you can do in X pass or in X query, okay? Because in some sense, if you see the things we did, they are some kinds of queries, right? So they overlap. The basic structure of uh, X query is this construction there. You start by a for, defining a for, okay, and then you can use let, where, and return. And uh, it's better to learn this structure by example, okay? So uh, I will show you this by example. 
to show you that by example uh, we will use a second tool I call Zorba so let's call Zorba to the picture ah I think that let's see if the address changes So to use Zorba, okay, let's let's start. By a simple query here. Okay. Oh, now Zorba is more complex. Wow, beautiful now. Pretty beautiful. Now it's better than Okay, so Zorba, uh, you see, uh, this is a sentence in X query. Okay, uh, so we start telling that we are using X query version 1.0, and uh, you can use the let. To give a value to a variable, for example, and you must put this dollar sign uh, before the variable name. So I'm giving to the to the variable message a uh, uh, label, denotopia, and I ask him it to return uh, XML like book, a message, and slash book. So you can see things in this sentence. The first is uh, you can produce an output, an XML, which is the result of the query. In fact, you can put something that is not not necessarily XML, but usually XML is good as an output. Okay? So you put a play here. And what happens? Let me put to record the. Zorba here? No, Zorba here. Okay. So, what happens if you sit down? This is the result now. You see there? The result. So, this is a simple query. Okay. So, uh, these two, um, how can I say Chavez? Is, is not brackets. Someone know how to say Chavez in English? No? Chavez in English. Let me see. Oh, no, this is not what I want. I need some translate. No, it's that exactly that. No, <laughs> not after these guys. If I put this guy here, I don't know. They are improving, you know. If I put brackets, but brackets is no brackets in this way. Oh shit. Parentheses is parentheses, it's, it's, it's much more parentheses, but. I'm trying to see if there is bracket. Ah, curly brackets. Okay, so 
you use curly brackets <laughs> to indicate something that returns inside the XML. So, for example, if you see our previous example, okay, uh, you want to return the, the message inside these two elements. So, book, the elements are literals. You return the way you write, okay? But you want to replace by something inside it. So you put the curly brackets to do that, okay? And there is a function I will show you, we call data, uh, which will extract the literal content from an element or an attribute. So let's see more examples, okay? So this case, in this case here, hmm, I think the, the letters are, are are small, I don't know why. Okay, so let's let's consider. Uh, no, this this example we are red C, right? We know that. Let's see another example. Uh, the same. Ah, okay. No, no, this is just to show you that you can do something like. Uh, this example here. And if you play it, you will see uh, that uh, in the in the case of title, I want literally to to transcribe it. So I didn't use the curly brackets, okay? But the message is something that I want to get the variable and replace by something that is inside the variable. I, I, I then I put the curly brackets. Okay, this is just to show you that. Uh, okay, the same thing could be the following. If you try, for example, to put everything in the curly brackets like that, okay, it will not like it, okay, because for him, uh, title. Is not a variable, it's not something that you can get and, and extract something, okay? So you can use this approach here, in which if you need to mix things, you can tell this is a data. In this way, okay, you tell this is a data, which has this value here, okay? And a comma here, a comma, and then it, it doesn't work. Let me see what I forgot. Ah, it's not it's not a double. It's a no. Ah, no, no. This this guy here. I don't know what this this guy here. You see? So you tell that it's a data and it goes. Okay. So now in this address here, if you want just. A, a, if you want at home, play with these things, because I know that you are so happy in learning these things that when you go at home and you tell, okay, I do nothing anymore, I just try these things now. So in this address, you see, in this address in my page, I have, um, sorry, I have uh, an XML document, okay? And why I have this XML document in this address? Because Zorba, uh, different from the other two, it, it needs some uh, address in which you get uh, the document and you query it. So it imagines that you have the XML in some place, the source, and then it queries it. Okay? So let's see here, for example. This is an example of X query. Okay? And this is an example to show you that you can mix, you can mix XPath with XQuery. Okay? So, I will copy and paste here. But, I must tell you that for now on, 
I am using, you see here, uh, to avoid to write all the time all this address. I will, add, I, will, I will write this address representing the address above, right? Okay? So, when I show in the example, in this case, I show this address here, you see? So, this address, in fact, means double, means this address here. Oh, not black. So, whenever I use this, I mean this, okay? So here, when I use here, I mean this. If I want, I will copy here the, the, the query. I will copy the Zorba. Okay. But this guy I need to replace by the real address which is this one okay so what do you think this guy will show me what all the entire XML file do you think Yes, so you see this variable here now, when you use this doc, this variable now represents the document, okay? And then here is the root, right? So it will show you the entire document. Right? And you can use whatever you want of XPath here, okay? So if you want to put individual here, you can put and it will show you just individual okay and the, all the things we learned about XPath you can put there okay so it will return that and if you put individual and age as we saw it showed just the age and so on so here we still talking XQuery and XPath okay but let's go deeper here I'm showing a complex XPath example in XQuery, but it's the same, okay? It's just filters, you see, the age uh, uh, above 20 and gender ma uh, male, okay? It just do that. Uh, but now let's add some XQuery things. For example, XQuery can count. What do you think this uh, query will count? The numbers of elements individual. Right. This is the thing. So it returns three. Because we have three individuals. Okay. Uh, and, and that... One because is the it will count the individual is more than twenty years and uh, gender masculine. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's talk about the for. Okay. The for is a statement in which you tell for a variable, for example, in this is one way to use for because XQuery is really a um, complex language. Okay. I'll show just some key examples so you can get the idea of how you do queries in XPath, in XQuery, okay? So, for example, you do uh, for i i in and then I give an XPath, okay? So, what happens? It will iterate. So, X, this XPath brings me to what? To each individual, right? To each individual. Okay. So it brings me to each individual. So what happens? It iterates and it puts in I the first individual and then enter in the four. And you do something and then come back and get the second individual and put in the I and go ahead again and again. So it iterates putting in the I each element I define. Okay. 
And then inside the for, I ask the, the query to return the age. So what do you happen here? Did you understand this example? Or not? No? It's, it shows you the three dates. But do you understand? Everybody understand? Understand? Yes? So, let's see here. The three ages, right? Good. And that... So, now I'm adding the sentence where. Okay? So, the sentence where is a kind of... Is a, a filter. Okay? It's like where in the SQL. You define where and a condition. Okay? And this condition you write in an X path way. X path way. Okay? So, in this case, I'm looking for uh, those... Uh, individuals whose age is more than 70. Okay? So it gives me back that. Beautiful, right? It's, it's beautiful. I like that, yeah. Okay. In the weekend, you can go with your notebook to the park and sit there and say, okay. Now, I just go deep in this X query thing. I'll be lost in my query sentences. Okay, so now, when I, when I send back the results, okay, so I showed you, when I send back the results, I can produce things inside XML. Okay, so let's consider the following. I want to get all individuals with more than 17, okay? But then I want to get their names, just the names of these guys, and produce elements mayor, which is uh, more than 17, right? And put the, the names inside these elements, okay? So you, you, you remember that uh, in this case I'm using data, okay, you see data there, but data here has a second purpose, which is the following. Uh, I don't want the name of the attributes, just the content, okay? So if I put data there, it will give me just the content of the attributes. Okay. Otherwise, if I don't put data, it will give me the name of the attribute, equal, and the content of the attribute. Okay. So the result of this guy is something like that. What is it? Oh, it doesn't show me. It's empty. Okay. So let's go there and get by ourselves. I put here in the Zorba play. You see what it does. It produces this new element mayor, okay, and put inside the document mayor uh, the content of the names. So in this sense, you start to see that I can produce XML documents as results of X query path, okay. X query sentences. Here is not a complete XML document yet. Because to be a complete XML document, I need just one root. And I have two roots here. Okay? But I will show you that I can do that. Okay. Let's go ahead.
What? If else, I will show you. Now. No, not now. Just a minute, but I will show you. Something here. Okay. I will I achieve the if else. There is the if else here. Okay. You can put, and this is beautiful. This is something that you can stay all the night thinking about. Yeah. Okay. You can put an X query inside another X query. Inside another X query. So it's kind of a different way of producing queries. It's just beautiful. And why is that? And this is something uh, re uh, concerning the model, right? The data I want to get is hierarchical, right? But also the output can be in a hierarchy if I want that the output is also XML, right? And to produce a hierarchy in the output, I must have some kind of hierarchical query. And this is an hierarchical query because I can put a query inside a query. And it produces something hierarchical, right? Are you following me? Not anymore. So, see that. See that example here. We have... I copy here to the... So, it's bigger and you can see that. Okay, down. So see that this is an X query, okay? A beautiful X query. So uh, we have the outer X query, and the outer X query is the let uh, variable return, and it returns a tag, a bigger tag, and then we have the curly brackets, okay? And the curly brackets allow us to start a new X query inside the the result. Okay, so it will run the second X query inside the first X query, and it will produce the element inside it. Okay, are you following this idea? What do you think it produces? You want to tell? It can be in Portuguese, if you wish. So it will be a root, one root, okay, which is classification. And inside this root, we have the major elements, okay? So, you see the importance of having an X query inside an X query because the inside will iterate in several. But I want to put all these guys inside just one guy. So I produce this bigger one and then I produce the second one. And you may imagine that in several levels, right? Inside the second one, I could produce a third one. I can do that, okay? And I can do that in several levels. And this is really beautiful. Right? And you may imagine that I can do a chain. Because the result of an one, one X query can pass to another X, X query. Right? This is good. Right? You are not uh, uh, consternated. I don't know how to tell in English. You are not... Uh, Okay. Oh, uh, this is just no. This exercise is for people from database. I will jump there. Okay. So let's consider now order by. Order by, you can ask 
to order the output in some order. It's like X SQL order by. You just tell the order and it, it uh, outputs something in some order. So in this case, I ask it to order by name. So Doriana came, came before Kinkas. Even if Kinkas appears before Doriana in the XML file. And then comes if. If. Now comes if. What's if? If is when is mainly used, for example, in the output. When you want to, uh, to show or to produce different outputs according to some condition. Like this one. Okay? So, for example, I can tell if the age is more or equal 18, show me with the tag maior, which is great, right? And uh, uh, else, show me with the minor. Okay, so the output of this guy will be the thing you can see there. Okay, let me let me copy. I don't know if it's readable, so let me copy here. So you see that if you define the type of element in the output according to the age. Do you understand? Here is some examples of XQuery from Elmazi but are not readable, right? Um... Uh, Let me show you more examples. So, I will show you an interesting file. This is the schema of... Uh, this is the, uh, a diagram of the XM schema, which I retrieved from Eclipse. If you remember that I produced that guy, in the clips, okay? So I have uh, uh, publications type and uh, inside it push each publication I have uh, uh, I have the, the title this is the, the title, categories and other publications. This is publications in the plural and inside it, I have categories and publications. So it's a file where, where I have categories and publications. The better way to, 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 to see that is going to the address where it's published. So it's published here, in this address here. And if you go there, you can see that there is publications. My publications are in, in XML. And I have the title, the authors, events, months, year, and several things. Okay? And I also have another part where I have categories. Okay? Categories of, in, of publications and so on and so forth. Okay, and one interesting thing is here, you can produce a query. This is just an example to show you an idea. Okay, 
you can produce a query uh, which combines categories and uh, combines categories and um, publications. It's a kind of join. I will show you click quickly here. We cannot go deep on it because we don't have enough time today. But just to give an idea. Oh, just a moment. I will put here the address of the document and the query. It's not this one. No, no, it's from here. Right. So, just to show you what we can do in next query. I have a for, and the first part of the for goes toward the categories. Okay? So I have a next path telling, give me the categories. Okay? The second part goes toward the publications. Okay? And then, uh, I tell where, just, just me, let, let me just, this is publica docs. Okay. So it tells me, okay, this is the key of publication must be equal to the key of the category. So if you remember what you studied in relational databases, this is a join. You, you are doing a join of two parts of the document. Okay? But you can even have two documents, two XML documents, and do a join of two documents. Okay? And then here I'm filtering a specific category, which is a science domain. So what this guy will return to me, you return all papers whose category is a science. Okay, so if you do a join and you select filter just those papers. So if you see the result here and you, you go and to see the category, which I don't know where is it. Oh, it's, it's, okay. Uh, it, it shows in a, in a smaller, smaller uh, format, okay. But if you get the category of this guy here, you see that it's a science, okay. And if you get the category of each return, XML is a science. So it do the join and it filters, okay. Good. So you can even do the join. Okay, you, 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 you use SQL to do joins in XML inside the relational database. But this is a crazy thing, right? I prefer if you are going towards XML, you must just assume XML, right? So X query is beautiful. So you just go there and use it. Okay? So. In the real cases today, several, they are, cons they consider that first. Uh, XML is like, uh, the old, uh, hierarchical database. Okay, I don't know, you don't, I don't know if you know that, but if you got the, uh, get the history of database, we have this hierarchical database, which is the idea is, your structure is an hierarchy, okay? Okay, so if you consider that XML is spreading a lot, and people are using it a lot, okay? For example, for documents, you store documents of your company or documents of things, 
and they are in XML and you put in some place. Okay. So the best uh, the best way to do query on these guys is by using XQuery. Okay. There are several. Uh, I can show you here in another class. Uh, I think the name is XBase. It's, an, uh, it's a complete database just with XML. It puts XML, but it, it does it doesn't go it doesn't store independent documents. It puts the XML inside uh, its format in a database, and you can just do XQuery and get data, combine data, and it's really fast. Okay. So some people are using uh, XML like the successor of uh, relational databases in some applications. Even though I think, if you are thinking in a database way, tables are much more um, easy to think than hierarchies. But the thing is, if you are putting inside your database documents, which are hierarchical by nature, you may think, that you start the, then as XML and then you just query them. Yes, this is a good uh, remark. Okay, uh, objects are hierarchical. You are right, and and in and, and and it's growing the idea that you just get objects and store them. There is the JSON format, which is also hierarchical, which, which is based on the the JavaScript. But XML you also use it a lot. So you may imagine that the um, an XML or an hierarchy represents the state of objects, which are complex and a hierarchical. So, you are right. It's, a, it's another, another scenario. Okay. Right. Yes, and, and, and you can just store it, right? Instead of, okay, you convert this in some relational thing and blah, 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 you just store it. And then you export it, okay? This is right. So we are communicating by XML, so you can just store things and after you, you think uh, uh, how you acquire it by using XQuery. And you may imagine that also in a distributed way, if you think the web as a database, not something like in a company you have your own database, but if the web is a database, you can also XQuery it. So sometimes you want to go to Amazon and ask something for the Amazon database. So Amazon can give you an interface with XQuery and you go there and just go put your XQuery. And, and the thing that you do now, and you transform your page in XML so we can XQuery you in your page. Okay? But this is for the next class. So.